رمضان مجال الصلوات طوبى للنفس بتقواها رمضان كريم 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 شهر عظيم 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 رمضان كريم 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 شهر عظيم 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 قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة تلقى السعادة تلقى النعيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله Dear brothers and sisters Welcome once again to Islam the natural way a special series of Ramadan TV programs prepared and produced by the Ghana Islamic Trust. In today's program, Brother Adam Hussein, a student of the Guyana Islamic Institute, will speak to us on dutifulness to parents. This morning's recitation of Quran is done by Brother Riaz Bipat, a student of the GII. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واخفضهما جناح الذل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ All praise are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and send salam and salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to my esteemed Muslim viewers and to my non-Muslim viewers may the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you all. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us another opportunity to witness this holy month of Ramadan. It is during these blessed days that we have a chance to maximize our efforts, accumulate abundant rewards and strive towards becoming better Muslims. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Al-Islam, my main focus this morning is to touch on a topic of great importance in our lives, the dutifulness towards parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it essential and an obligation upon all humans and jinns to worship him alone. And after worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the second commandment is to be dutiful to our parents. And if we are lucky enough that either or both of our parents attain old age in our care, we do not say a word of disrespect to them. Even the slightest action to show our disapproval for any actions of our parents is discouraged in Islam. It is very important, my brothers and sisters, that if we have parents, or for some of us, parents, our parents passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them the highest level in Jannah. There are actions that we could do 
on their behalf to respect to have respect for them. Abdullah bin Mas'ud went to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asking some questions. The first question was, "What is the most beloved act that one could do to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa taala?" The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam responded, "To pray on time." Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu an said, and after that, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Be dutiful to your parents." Be dutiful to your parents, to show respect to them, to listen to them, to assist them, to defend them, and do, any, and do everything you could do in your capacity to show your love and respect to them. It is obligated upon you to respect your parents, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. And this is a way to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am sure that each and every one of us would agree that in order for our existence in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for us a family and parents to guide us. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed and Allah says you must learn to, sh to be respectful to those whom we have chosen to bring you into existence, no matter who they are or what religion they follow. You still have to be respectful and show kindness towards them. It is only when they ask you to do something in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you politely excuse yourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Isra, Your Lord has ordained that you worship none but Him, and that you be kind to your parents. And if, and if one or both of them attain old age with you, do not say to them a word of disrespect nor shout at them but address them in terms of honor and lower to them the wing of humility out of mercy and pray my lord have mercy on both of them as they raised me when i was young subhanallah my, my dear brothers and sisters in this beautiful verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summarized your duties and mine to, unto our parents in the same verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ You shouldn't even make a sound from your mouth that is harmful towards them, even if you disagree with them, even if they, even if they are the parents that are calling you towards the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This does not justify for you making a disrespectful word towards them. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about the major sins in Islam. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Associating partners with Allah and being disrespectful or undutiful to our parents. This shows us that being dutiful to our parents is not something that should be taken lightly. Our responsibilities towards our parents extend beyond merely providing for their physical needs. We are obligated to fulfill their emotional needs, showing them love, compassion, and gratitude. This duty does not diminish with age, rather it grows as they grow older and become more dependent on you. In today's age, where persons often put their family before their parents, even to the extent that some persons believe that he or she should have precedence over their partner's parents. This is truly a sickness in today's society, and one have to rectify themselves. In caring for our parents, we not only fulfill, we do not only fulfill a religious duty, but also set an example for the future generations, fostering a culture of compassion and respect within the families and communities. As our parents age, they may require additional care and they may re require additional care. In Surah Al-Isra, it instructs us to lower, them, lower to them the wings of humility, signifying a gentle and compassionate approach. In navigating the challenges of caring for aging parents, Islam encourages us to approach this responsibility with patience and compassion. My dear brothers and sisters, think about how much our parents have done for us. It is hard to imagine disrespecting them after all they have done for us. Firstly, our mothers. Our mothers went through a lot to bring us into this world. 
the sleepless nights they had with us, comforting us when we cry and giving us all their love. They work hard to make sure we have everything we need. And not to forget our fathers. They are, they are the strong pillar in the family. They work hard all day to support us. They put aside their own needs to take care of us and keep our family safe. Their love and dedication shows how important a family is. Things wouldn't always go the way we want. And at times our parents would become angry at us or say harsh things towards us, even set restrictions upon us. But I can assure you, my brothers and sisters, that our parents are doing it out of love for us. In that moment, we may not realize what our parents are doing for us, but in some point, but in, some point in time, when we realize, we will be thankful for it. As Muslims, it is imperative that we understand our duties towards our parents, and today, I would like to highlight a few of them. Respect and honor. We must treat our parents with the utmost respect and honor, regardless of their status or circumstance. This includes speaking to them kindly, listening to their advice, and, re and refraining from any form of disobedience. Although our parents may give us advice which is not up to date with the modern society, we should still listen to them and acknowledge what they have to say. It may be useful in some point in time. When we speak to our parents, it should be with kindness, even in times of disagreement or conflict. Our words should reflect respect and courtesy. Listening attentively to their advices, even if we may not agree with it, it is the way of honoring the role they play in our lives and recognizing the value of their guidance. Secondly, obedience to our parents hold, high, hold a high position in Islam, reflecting the core values of submission and gratitude. It is not merely about following their directives blindly, but rather about recognizing their authority as established by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we obey our parents, it demonstrates our commitment, our commitment to divine commandment and honoring them. Thirdly, kindness and compassion towards our parents are fundamental principles in Islam, reflecting the essence of mercy and love embedded in our faith. It is not merely about fulfilling our duties out of obligation, but about genuinely caring for them genuinely caring for their well-being and nurture, nurturing a bond of affection and respect. My dear brothers and sisters, in, in Islam, kindness and compassion towards parents encompasses various dimensions, extending beyond just meeting their physical needs, while providing for material necessities such as food, clothing, and shelter is crucial, but kindness involves but true kindness involves going above and beyond to ensure their comfort and happiness. Fourthly, praying for the well-being and forgiveness of our parents hold profound significance in Islam, reflecting our love, respect, and concern for their, for their welfare, both in this life and in the hereafter. It is a powerful act of devotion that carries immense blessings and rewards, not only for our parents, for ourselves too. In Islam, prayers are a means of communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking His mercy and invoking His blessings upon our loved ones. When we supplicate for our parents, we demonstrate our recognition of their sacrifice, our gratitude for their love and guidance, and our desire for their happiness and prosperity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all to be dutiful towards our parents. These are some virtues associated with being dutiful to our parents in Islam. Elevation of status. Being dutiful to our parents elevates one's status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is considered a noble deed that earns, his that earns his pleasure and rewards in this life and in the hereafter. Blessings and Barakah. Fulfilling the right of our parents brings blessings and barakah, divine blessings, into one's life. It is believed that one's sustenance and overall well-being 
are increased through the mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he honors his parents. Forgiveness of sins. Being dutiful to parents is a mean of expiations of sins. Even minor disagreements or mistakes with parents can be forgiven through sincere, through sincere repentance and acts of kindness towards them. And lastly, intercession on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, parents will have the opportunity to intercede on behalf of their dutiful children. Their supplication can serve as a means of mercy and forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear respected brothers and sisters, in essence, being dutiful to parents is not only a moral obligation, but also a means of attaining spiritual elevation and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is, it is a fundamental aspect of Islamic teachings that emphasize the importance of family, compassion, and gratitude. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to honor and obey our parents and grant them health, happiness, and a long life. Amen. Let us appreciate everything our parents have done for us. They deserve our love, respect, more than anyone else. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the pleasure, of the, the pleasure of the Lord is the pleasure of our, of our parents, and the displeasure of our Lord is in the displeasure of our parents. Before I conclude, let us not forget to make supplications for our parents. This is a famous dua we could make for our parents. رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا my Lord, be merciful to them as they raised me when I was young. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our prayers and grant us strength and wisdom to fulfill our duties towards our parents. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa lisa'ili al-muslimina min kulli dham fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayk until tomorrow assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh today's quranic wisdom surah isra verse 84 surah isra also known as bani israel verse 84 qul kullun ya'malu ala shakilatihi say everybody does deeds in accordance with his own predisposition Everybody does deeds according to his own, in Arabic, mizaj, according to how he has been programmed to do them. Now this ayah, once again, as with all of our maxims, it has multiple levels, multiple layers of understanding. And today we will delineate four of them. At the first level, everybody does what he wants in accordance with his own shakil, his own mechanism. The actual context of the verse is theological. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right before, He mentions, whenever good comes down to a person, you find that many of them become stingy. And whenever bad happens, they become complaining. They're never happy. If it's good, they're not doing what they're supposed to do. And if it's bad, they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Then Allah says, قُلْ كُلٌّ يَعْمَلُ عَلَىٰ شَاكِلَتِهِ Everybody deals with situations in accordance with how they themselves are. And so, if you are good, you will deal with the situation in a good manner. And if you are bad, you will deal with the situation in a bad manner. And this deeper meaning is that the mu'min will respond in a positive manner and the kafir will respond in a negative manner. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the same situation, the same scenario, if it happens to a good person because he or she is good, they will take good from this. And if it happens to a bad person, then because they are bad, they will respond to in bad. This is one meaning of it. Another meaning, the secondary meaning is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created people differently. And each person has different akhlaq that the other person does not have. And so some people are tested with being too impatient. 
Some people are tested with a quick temper. Some people are tested with cowardice. Some people are tested with stinginess. So Allah is saying everybody has different predispositions that they have to deal with. And so Allah is testing everybody in a different manner. And each one has their own shakil, their own, you know, mizaj, their own spiritual DNA. And this is proven in a beautiful hadith where a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the name of Al-Ashaj ibn Al-Qais. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh, Ashaj, you have two characteristics Allah loves. Al-Hilmu wal-Ana. And that is to control your anger and to think before you act. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, these two, did I learn them? Did I train myself to get them? Or did Allah bless me with them and I was born with them? So the Prophet said, no, Allah blessed you with them. This is how you were when you were born. So he said, Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed me with these two characteristics that he loves. And this is the reality. Every one of us, we have certain akhlaq that we take it for easy. It's not that difficult. And the same issue, our brother, our cousin, our friend is not able to deal with it. And vice versa. We have problems in certain things and our friend, our cousin, our relative does not have problem with that. So Allah is saying, قُلْ كُلٌّ يَعْمَلُ عَلَىٰ شَاكِلَتِهِ We have different psychologies. We have different mizaj. This is another deeper layer of the ayah. A third meaning of the ayah, قُلْ كُلٌّ يَعْمَلُ عَلَىٰ شَاكِلَتِهِ Now we can also apply it as Ibn Al-Qayyim and others do to our worldly professions, our jobs, our careers, our interests. Allah is saying, I did not create all of you on the same shakil. I didn't create all of you to think the same, look the same, act the same. And I created you with a healthy variety that is the spice of life that allows the dunya to run. Allah says in the Quran, أَهُمْ يَقْسِمُونَ رَحْمَةَ رَبِّكْ نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعِيشَتَهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَرَفَعْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ دَرَجَاتٍ لِيَتَّخِذَ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا سُخْرِيَّةٍ Are they the ones assigning Allah's rizq? Do they assign salaries? Do they assign who gets what? Do they assign who does what for life? We are the ones we assign for each person how they shall get their rizq. We assign their jobs, their careers, their professions. We assign what track they're going to do in order to get their rizq. And in doing so, we have preferred some over others so that each group can take advantage of others in what they need. This is a profound ayah and I've spoken about the concept multiple times. Imagine if every single person in society had the same career. Society would cease to function. Imagine if everybody had the same personality. A very boring society. Allah says, كل كل يعمل على شاكلته. Allah says نحن قسمنا بينهم معيشتهم. Their معيشة, their jobs, their sustenance. We distributed it. And so, no matter what your career is, you need people in other careers to help you live. No matter what your profession is, you need to get the expertise and the help of other people. And so, the doctor needs the car mechanic, the car mechanic needs the carpenter, the carpenter, everybody needs everybody else. This is what Allah is saying. I'm the one who created this diversity. And so, I'm the one who has assigned each one of you to do these professions. That is another understanding of this ayah, the third understanding. And a fourth understanding, and there are even more but because of time, we'll stop at four. The fourth understanding, this is also mentioned by Imam Malik and others, this ayah, is that, and this is very profound and very useful for us, not everybody will get to Jannah because of the same deeds. Not everybody has the same path to Jannah even if they get to Jannah. The path to Jannah how you get there with your specific good deeds are going to be different. And some people, Allah has made certain acts an easier mechanism to get to Jannah. And for other people, those same acts are very difficult. It is uh, mentioned in our books of history that there was a 
worshiper who was a great worshiper. He had secluded himself from society. He would just be ibadah. He was a friend of Imam Malik in childhood. Imam Malik, you know, he took the path of knowledge. He took the path of halaqat and durus. And a day came when Imam Malik, his halaqa was the largest in all of Medina. And thousands of people would come. So one day his friend heard about this. He wrote him a letter and he said to him, Oh, Imam Malik, this is not the way. Rather, the way is you seclude yourself and you do ibadah and you pray to hajjud and you get, give up public lectures. So Imam Malik wrote back to him, Inna Allah Ta'ala qasam al-a'mala kama qasam al-arzaq. Qul kullun ya'malu la shakilati. Allah has given different people different amal like he has given different people different careers and jobs. And for some people, this is Imam Malik speaking, for some people, Allah opened the door for them for fasting. And for others, fasting is difficult, but Allah opened the door for salah. And for some people, Allah opened the door for jihad against the Romans and whatnot. And for others, Allah opened the door for worship, like you, you're worshiping. And for others, Allah opened the door for ilm and preaching. And this is the door Allah opened for me. Imam Malik is saying, I find ibadah and I find my function and role in studying and in preaching to others. And I don't think what you are doing is any lesser than what I'm doing. And I hope you as well understand that what I'm doing, I don't think is any lesser than what you are doing. قُلْ كُلٌّ يَعْمَلُ عَلَى شَاكِلَتِ Now this is actually an inspiration for all of us. O oh Muslim, listen to me carefully. Your own personality is your competition not me not you not anybody else not the person next to you you look at yourself what can i do what am i qualified to do what are my talents you don't have to compare yourself with the multimillionaire who's building schools within, as a single-handed person. You don't have to compare yourself with the sheikh that has the spotlight on himself. You say, I don't have ilm, I don't have the spotlight. You're not in competition with me or anybody else. You're in competition with yourself. What can you do? What are your qualifications? What are your passions? What door has opened to you? What door has Allah opened to you that he hasn't opened to other people? For some people, O oh Muslim, to take care. You might have a sister who is unmarried, a widow with children. For you to take care of her and your nephews and nieces, that might be your door to Firdaus. You might have an elderly mother that you can take care of. There's no limelight. There's no fame and fanfare in that. But that is your way to Jannah for those. You might have a chapter of charity that nobody knows about, but you can do. You might be able to help in some manner. You might be able to volunteer in Sunday school, be a mentor to the kids of our community. I don't know. Only you know. So my re request to you, remember this ayah. قُلْ كُلٌّ يَعْمَلُ عَلَى شَاكِلَتِي Everybody does in accordance with his own predisposition. And go back to Imam Malik. What is your predisposition? What is your shakil? And ask yourself, how can I get to Firdaus al-A'la? And your path to get there might be different than somebody else's. No problem. As long as it is a path of good and a path of khair and a path of barakah. If Allah loves it, it is, it is a path to Jannah for Firdaus. So ask yourself, what are my talents? What are my passions? and then exert yourself in that so that insha'Allah ta'ala you can get to that same level as well wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Ramadan siyam wa dua رمضان أمان وصفاء رمضان صيام ودعاء رمضان أمان وصفاء رمضان سلوك وعطاء أهلا بقدومك يا رمضان رمضان كريم 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 شهر رمضان كريم 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 شهر عظيم 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 قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة تلقى السعادة تلقى